Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about branding, specifically how to develop a brand for your content marketing. The exercises I'm going to show you today could be used for a personal brand, a new company, an old company looking to do a retreat and rethink what their brand is. Yes, it's a Google Doc and a template, but it's also a mental model that you can use to figure out what your brand is, who you're talking to, and what it should probably look like when you go to engage your audience. The worksheet that is provided in the description below is specific to a personal brand, but the concepts can be applied to anything. If you like this video, please like and subscribe so that my ego feels fulfilled and I continue to make content. So here we are in the document. The first thing that I would ask you to do is make a copy. So you just go file and make a copy, share it and save it to your personal drive. This series was originally created as a five week plan that could be done with a group. Now, you can do it all at once, but I would suggest that you stick to the original timeline. Giving yourself time to do the research, think about it, and a week is about the right amount of time if you're already on a busy schedule. Now, if you've got a weekend and you're gonna power through it, you don't necessarily need to do it in this time frame, so that's up to you and your determination to get it done. Just make sure that you're engaged with each one of the questions and thinking about the answers that you're providing because what we decide here is what we're going to use to build all of our content and the items of our personal brand going forward. With all of that said, welcome to week one. This is where you're going to define your mission. The reason you're here is because you probably are trying to build a brand for yourself or your business and you're not currently meeting the expectations you have for yourself or you don't really know what to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is pick a mission. Now, by a mission, I mean, why are you creating content? And this exercise is here to help you with that. For all of these exercises that require thinking, I suggest that you just put something down. Don't get too hung up on it. Get through all of the questions once with a reasonable amount of thought and then go back and take a second pass. Go through it two or three times and that will get you to the best results. Now, if you're the type of person that just powers through things, that's cool too. But I do find that revisiting it is helpful as you're going to hold yourself to what you're saying here for a while while you're creating content. So you're best to be happy with it. So the first question that you need to sit and ask yourself is what do you want to be known for? There's two columns here, one for a word and one for a description. In the words column, try to keep it to a one to two word phrase. You wanna be able to boil it down so that it's actionable. The description is there so that you can fill in a little bit more information for yourself, as well as expand on why that's important to you. For example, I wanna be known for marketing, let's say. And the reason is I've done this for 20 years and I want to share. Now, that's me. If you're doing this for a brand that's not personal, I'd recommend just thinking of the brand as a person and going through these questions. You can list as many things here as you feel comfortable with, but in the end, I'm going to suggest that you pick three as people tend to hang characters of a brand or a person on two or three traits. So pick the ones that you feel are the most strongest. Question number two is what qualities do you want associated with you in regards to your personal brand? An example might be technical expertise. And again, the description is to just add a little bit of rationale for yourself as to why that's something you want associated with you. I realize this might sound a little bit therapy-like, but in the end, it's going to make your content creation way easier because when you're lost, you can come back to these points and create 
within the confines of your framework. Section number three is pretty straightforward. What word do you want to describe the first impression people get when they see you in your content? As an example, if I were a rock and roll band like Gwar, I might say shock. And that's important to me because I want to create a visceral reaction when people see and hear my band play. Now, given you are probably a professional building a personal brand, you might want to go with something like trust or friendly or professional. The why it's important to you column is for you to understand your motivations a little bit. Keep in mind, you need to create content to represent yourself. So having these particular touch points can help with the tone and the messages that you write. Step four is write three statements for your brand based on your answers from one to three. You can combine the words from your answers or just use them as inspiration to write a sentence. But the goal here is to write three statements for your personal brand. The reason I want you to write three is to just get some ideas out there. Don't worry about them being perfect. Just combine the words and the concepts from above into a statement about your brand and who you want to be within your content and within the world. With that out of the way, we can move on to week two exercises. You should have three statements about what your brand is about and some notes about what you want people to feel and why you're doing it. Week two's exercise are about research and reflection. Now, when I say that, it can go as heady as you feel comfortable with, but what we're trying to do is find inspiration for the content. To do that, you need to look at yourself or if you're working on a brand, think from the perspective of your brand or your target customer. Question number one is who do you look up to? Ideally, this would be other brands or people or personalities. It could be people in your life, family. There really is no limitations on this. Just put a name and a reason. The idea behind this is by looking at the reasons you look up to other people, you can look at the qualities within yourself that might work within your content. For those of you that want to use family or close friends, I would suggest that there still be some business or brand related reason that you're looking up to them. It could be for their work ethic or their content or their intelligence. It's kind of up to you, but keep in mind that this needs to live within the realm of your personal brand or the brand you're building. Number two is who is my target customer slash content consumer? You'll see I have a name field and a short description field. In the name field, I want you to give them a name and be as specific as possible. If there's a person in mind that you are selling to, use them as an example. So my friend Steve, in the short description, you could say he's a six foot tall male who likes soccer and digital marketing. Or if you're going to use a category of people, you could say, small business owners in the Montreal area whose primary language is French and they do less than a million dollars a year. Just make sure that you have a clear vision of who it is you're trying to talk to. What industry are they in? What do they like to eat? Where are they hanging out? These are the types of things you can use when you go to build your content. The third question is who am I competing against? Now that's both in business and within the content space. So if you are looking to provide educational content, make a list of other people providing similar content to you. When I say, who are we competing against? I'm talking about attention. I'm talking about information. I'm talking about sales. Really, it depends on your brand and your business, but generally speaking, we're all competing for attention, whether it's on a social platform or to get a lead or make a sales call. People only have so much time to give and you need to understand who you're up against when competing for that time. Again, we have a name column, so you could put in a brand, you could put in a person, you might even put in a technology. In the why column, you're putting why you see that as competing for your customer's attention. 
so you can better understand what you're putting into the world and the related content your potential customers may have consumed before or after they find you. Number four is a big one, and I suggest you spend some real time on this, and that's examples of good content. And I get it, good and bad are a relative scale, but it's your brand, so you get to decide. Go out into the world, search the topics related to what you wanna be known for, and see who's doing it well, so that you have a sense of where you need to be to be able to compete. You're going to add the reason why you think it's good, because when you go to create your own content, those reasons are going to be very helpful. Number five is the exact opposite of the last one, and that's examples of bad content. A lot of people love this one. There's a lot of crap content out there, so go out, find the ones that you definitely don't want to be like. That's what you're looking for. These are an excellent waypoint for when you're creating content to know if you're on the right track. The final question in this week's exercise is a list of things you should probably brag about. Don't be modest. You're putting together a brand and you're gonna tell the world a bunch of stuff. We need to know why should we listen to you? Maybe it's money earned for a company. Maybe it's books you've written. Maybe it's trophies you've won. It really depends on the brand you're trying to build. But list them all out here. Think of it like your resume for why you're worth listening to. If you're shy, it's okay. Just make the list and in future exercises, we'll figure out how to get over the fear of telling people how great you are. So now we're on to week three where we're gonna produce a little bit of test content based on the information we figured out in the previous exercises. We know what our mission is, we know who we're trying to talk to, and we have some ideas about the types of things we might be able to talk about. It's time to create, and that's what we're going to do in this exercise. Like it says at the top here, before doing this exercise, you might want to do a content ecosystem map, which I have another video for, so you can go check that out. There's a link in the document. But basically, you're just taking stock of the channels that you currently could post content to. If you're starting fresh, you can also just make a list of the ones that you're looking to use in the future. Once you have a map or a list of the channels that you currently have, the number one item on this week is to pick the one that you want to start improving your presence on. Now, you may have five, but I recommend you just pick one that's important to you so that you don't get overwhelmed and quit before you get started. If you are a business professional, maybe that's LinkedIn. If you are more in fashion or influencer vein, music, you might wanna look at Instagram, TikTok. It really depends on the mission of your brand. So just make a map and pick the one that you think could improve the easiest. You see here, we have the platform name, so you could just put Twitter, and then the formats that you're going to use so that when you get lost or overwhelmed, you have a reminder that you're sticking to this small set of subformats. A big thing to do if you're starting from zero is to not get overwhelmed doing everything. Step number two is to pick a main point and three messaging ideas. The primary message is the thing that you're going to focus your content around. A good place to look would be the list of things you'd like to be known for or the things that you could brag about that we did in the previous exercise. For me, maybe it would be digital marketing is easy. You just need to use my word docs. For the three messaging ideas, you're looking for information related to your main point. If my primary message was creating a personal brand can be easy, then each of my three messaging ideas would reinforce that somehow. Maybe there would be some information about the value of a personal brand, or maybe it would be a tip from one of the previous exercises. Pick three if you can come up with more even better because you could use them in the future. So really take some time and just brainstorm around your primary message and sub messages or supporting messages that you could put out there to let people know what you're all about. The next question you need to answer is what do you want to achieve with these posts? Now, you might need to do separate objectives for the different posts, but it's good to know why you are creating this content. 
It could be information, it could be inspiration or entertainment. It could also be to generate sales or leads or potential consulting gigs. Again, it depends on your brand. For this exercise, I suggest you just pick one objective as it does simplify the process, especially if you're struggling to get going. Question number three is, how are you gonna say it? And what I'm getting at here is the tone. If you're trying to be a professional at a high level, you might need to be a little more buttoned up than if you're trying to be a cool rock and roll band. It's 100% up to you to decide, but keep your audience in mind as you're gonna wanna match your tone to the people you're trying to talk to and impress them with your personal brand. Again, this is a great place to be specific. So in the future, when you're stuck, you have some idea how to craft your message. If you're struggling here, going back to that list of good content that we created earlier would be a good idea as you can pick up some clues as to how they talk and try and think about what it is that you liked about it. Number four is a related question to the previous and that's what should it look like? Now, on the internet, you're pretty free to just create content ad hoc with your phone or a screencast like I'm doing right now. But if you are trying to do something that is in a higher production value, make some notes about what that means so you can start thinking about what does it cost, who's going to help you, these types of questions that higher production stuff often requires if you don't have the skill. So the additional requirements fields are just for you to make some notes. Maybe you need two cameras, a helicopter, and a dog that can jump through a flaming hoop. Maybe you just need a whiteboard, or maybe you can just shoot it with everything you currently have. But if there are additional requirements, put them there so that you're aware of it before you get started. Finally on this exercise, create two posts. Just do it, get it done. I believe in you, put it out there. Maybe no one will react and that's fine. Maybe tons of people will react and that'll be fine too. The key is to make some posts and put it out there using all of the thinking we've done up to this point. You can do it. It's gonna be great. Let's go. We've got a model for what we're trying to say, some examples of some content showing how we're gonna say it and what it's gonna look like. So week four is for profile improvements. And the first thing on the list is to write a new bio. Again, I recommend you reference the work we did in weeks one and two, and that's what do you wanna be known for and what should you be bragging about? The bio is the place you wanna slide that in. Now you see I have two boxes here, and in the top one is the raw material. Raw material is where you just put it in there, make it happen, whether it's words, accomplishments, copying something you already have from your resume or existing profile, just get it all in one place so that you can look at it and turn it into a beautiful new bio. I realize everyone is not an excellent writer, so this might be a place where you need to ask for some help. Do a draft, ask a friend. If you need, you can ping me on Twitter, I'll give you my two cents. But the main thing I would suggest is try to keep it short, no more than three to 500 words. That is obviously too long, but at least you'll have a nice little summary that you can then break down to the different social platforms or use it in a resume. If you're running a product brand, a little history and the backstory is always nice to have. Don't be scared to do as many revisions as necessary or like I said, get some help from a writer. Number two is take a new photo. It's a personal brand, and as the person in the brand, you need to be in the photo. No hiding behind clever memes. If you're not comfortable with a photo, there's many stylized options or avatars that you could choose. Just realize that you're going to want to sync it across all platforms so that people recognize you no matter where they see you. So make sure that it's professional enough that it can work in most places. This is another one where you might need to ask for some help. Of the exercises in this framework, these are the ones people often struggle the most with. So I will put together a list of articles and resources that you can learn from and put a link in the description below. Those are the four main exercises of the personal brand power-up. I hope they helped you get a little clarity on your brand and helped you get some content started so that you can start posting and seeing what may or may not work for your personal brand. 
Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like the content. I have plenty more things that I'm looking to share. If you have questions, put them in the comment box below and I'll do my best to make a video or point you in the right direction. I hope those exercises have helped you power up your personal brand or at the very least helped you do some thinking around what you're trying to create and how you might present it in the world. The template, some resources, and a link to my Twitter are in the description below. So go forth and best of luck with your personal brand and your powered up marketing.